Here we are. Today, I am going to be doing a project that I've never done before. I'm actually going to be building a countertop for my island in my house out of the old red oak flooring that I tore out before we replaced the floors. And you can see that in previous videos. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and find that video in laminate flooring and also do a video on uh, how to do a door casing as we're kind of putting all the millwork together too. Um, so anyway, I'm actually going to attempt, for the first time, like I said, to build this countertop out of this old red, red oak flooring, but I'm going to do it differently than I've done similar projects like this before. I'm actually going to use three quarter inch uh, plywood, sand plywood, and I'm going to actually build the red oak flooring basically right on top of this, kind of giving it a stronger base. That's the idea at least. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is just like any other reclaimed lumber resource we're going to do is I got to start pulling all of the nails out of here. And then I'm gonna do my layout. Um, I've got my measurements per what I wanna build for the countertop size wise. So I'm gonna actually cut the plywood first, get the shape and size that I want, and then I'm gonna start kind of putting this whole thing together and hopefully it goes according to what I've got up here in this little tiny brain of mine. So we're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna document the whole thing. I'm gonna explain what I'm doing as I do it. Uh, hopefully we all learn from this one and it turns out as cool as I think I can, can envision it in my head. So. Let's get started. All right, so like I said, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this three quarter inch four by eight sheet of, uh, it's actually sanded birch. Um, that's the one I've chosen to do. It's the last three quarter piece I have in the shop. I'm trying to do this without spending any money, so uh, I'm just gonna source all the materials as needed to kind of clean up the shop a little bit and go from there. So I've got my dimensions, like I said, of what I want from my house. That's gonna be a 27 inch by 84 inch countertop and I'm gonna go ahead and cut the uh, cross cut first, which is basically going across the grain of that piece of uh, sand and birch. And once I cut it my, at my length of 84 inches, I'm then gonna take everything I need and set it up in front of that table saw. So I'm gonna rip that down to 27 inches, and then we'll be ready to basically prep this thing and start uh, putting that red oak on there after I source all the nails. And there's a lot of them, so uh, maybe I can recruit some of the kids to help me out. But, that's what I'm going for first. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this thing. I'm gonna move everything over to the table saw side. We're gonna rip it and then we'll see how this goes. All right, so this may come as a bit of a shock, but I actually don't own a track saw. I, I really want one, but I haven't purchased one yet. So either guys that I work with have one um, or I actually do this technique, which is actually kind of cool because I can show everyone out there how to do something like this without having to own a big fancy track saw or even a big fancy table saw. None of the stuff I have in here is, you know, Festool. So everything can be done with a little bit more precision. Um, I'm sure people are gritting their teeth right now watching this, but for the, for the average Joe out there, for sure, this is a great way to do a cross cut without using a track saw of any kind. Um, it's a pretty simple way to do it, especially if you're on a job site, you need to cut something fairly accurately. Uh, more accurately than just running, you know, a, a skill saw down that line and hoping you get, you know, nice and close. I actually take uh, one of my levels, so six foot, eight foot, four foot, whatever kind of distance you're going to cut, and I'll actually draw, I'll chalk out my line and then draw my line with my level for my cross cut, and then I use it just a conventional skill saw, so you know, a worm drive saw, and I actually set it up so my straight edge is basically acting as a track up against my, my, uh, sorry, my skill saw. So when I take my skill saw in here, I actually have one and a half inches from the edge to the blade on this particular saw. And usually they're, they're fairly standard, but you always want to measure it out. And the best way to measure that out is just basically stick your saw on the line you're going to cut and then mark out the outside edge of that guard to determine your distance away from the line you need to set your straight edge okay so in this case i'm actually going to be inset from my actual cut line an inch and a half back so i'll measure an inch and a half back or in this case you want to be real accurate you pull your dimension to to your line and you just take an inch and a half off that line so if i'm at 84 inches to my cut line i'm 82 and a half on my straight edge line. So I'll go ahead and mark that line on both ends. And then what I actually do to make sure I'm pretty tight to this is I'll stick my pencil right there on the point of my mark. And if I, I set that thing down there, I'll put my point down 
and I'll slide my straight edge right up to it, make a little tiny line, and then set my clamp right there on it. And I do that on both sides, and then I'm really ready to go on this thing. Um, and it's, it's, it's really more accurate than people think, and I do this a lot, especially on job sites, so I'm actually just gonna do it here in the shop to show everybody how you can do this without a track saw. So now that I have everything set up, I'm gonna go ahead and take my cross cut off, and then like I said, we'll set everything back up over here for the table saw, and we'll do our rip, and then we are actually ready to go on our sides and start to put that flooring together. because my table saw wasn't quite equipped to eat that whole piece at once. So I cut off enough where I could get it back on the other side of the table saw and cut it. Um, not a big deal. So I got down to the, the uh, length and width that I want. Um, I'm going to quickly check my corners, make sure everything's good to go square wise. And if it's not, I'll have to kind of correct that. Uh, you know, you're cutting off of um, lumber that you're assuming comes out of, the, out of the mill and out of the shop squared but not always i actually a lot of times will go ahead and cut my dimensions first and then come back with whatever i need if i leave a little bit of extra and i'll go ahead and square it up with um chop saw table saw whatever i need sometimes a skill saw like you saw me do before so anyway gotta cut the length gotta cut the width it's ready to go i'm gonna check my squares on this piece and then i'm gonna start prepping my red oak taking all the nails out making sure all the pieces that I have are in good condition because it is tongue and groove flooring and I want to actually use it to put back together that way. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I want to do to finish my edges as well. So I'm going to start prepping that stuff and then we're on to the fun piece, which is starting to put this thing together. And again, up here, it looks great. We'll see how it actually turns out. So let's roll the dice and go. actually taking most of the nails out to at least get started and start doing a layout kind of dry fitting things see where I want to go with it um, I have decided to do basically a bread box on the end of some sort with uh, um, some of the lumber or some of the lumber some of the flooring and what that means is I'm gonna actually I'm gonna run all of my flooring vertically basically following the, the plane of this, uh, this this plywood here and I'm gonna take this piece and I'm debating between one or two courses of it and lay it horizontal to basically across the board as a bread box finish. Um, a lot of tables are made that way. I think it's gonna look a little cooler, a little more finished than it would be if I just ran those to the edge and then, and then faced everything. So I'm trying to figure out 
I want to do one or two courses of that. I think I'm just going to go with one because it's going to be easier as far as just installing the flooring itself on top of this. And then I'm going to start running out. It's like a floor. I start running out the stair step fashion. I'm going to back up. So I can put all the pieces together. I'm going to glue everything down. All right, so as I'm running along here and setting these, uh, I found a couple of them that I wasn't paying attention on that uh, had the one end side cut off from initial install on the floor, and I installed those without paying attention. So I had to do a little, little, little working around that, but that's okay. I can do a little wood fill. Um, I got those guy, the gaps nice and tight anyway. But as I'm working to the end, I was actually going to set my bread box in the end first and have that tongue facing out to receive the, um, the flooring as it comes in. The problem is I'm not sure I'm able to slide these nice and tight to get into that tongue. So what I did was I ripped off the tongue of my bread box on this end, and then I actually set it down on the end of the board, got all squared up, clamped it down, and I drew facing my end line on the board down here. So I actually just scribed out my line on this board so I know that that's my measurement from this board to the edge for my cut and that way I can slide that bread box on this end all the way in. I think that's going to be a little bit easier for me to finish this install on this end. Um, otherwise I'm fighting it if it's already installed so that I can get it nice and tight that way too. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, just wanted to give that uh, update as I'm kind of working through this. So far so good. I'm uh, noticing some of the this oak is super old. It's like 26 years old. so. Um, there's some pieces, you know, especially as it comes out, but you know, when you're working with reclaimed wood, that's kind of what you get yourself into. So, um, I'm going to grab some more of these boards and keep going.
this. I've got everything glued and nailed up. Um, I've got my, my finish on my edge. And now what I'm gonna start to do is rip uh, some more of this flooring down to face the edge of this countertop. What I mean by that is I'm ripping both edges off to my distance from my top of my countertop to the bottom edge of that plywood, right? So that way I can face it off, okay? So in this case, this piece has already been cut and I'm gonna nail it up. And then I have that same red oak finish on this edge. Once I get everything nailed and glued and nailed up on all four sides, I'll let that set up and then I can actually take, I'm deciding between what kind of edges I want, but most likely, like I said, a bull nose edge. I'll take my router and run across all four edges and then it's ready to sand and start sanding uh, all the entire countertop. So um, I want to go dark. We're going to see how this finish comes off. I may have to use a little bit of stripper first before I start sanding. Um, like I said, these floors are like 26 years old, so we're just going to kind of get into it and see if we get, get out of it. Get in and get out, right? Um, I took a couple snoggers on the table saw there with some of the nails that are still sitting in these boards as I'm ripping them down. So I'm going to be wearing a mask for the rest of these rips because um, a couple nails hit the face. So lesson to be learned, but that's just as far as safety goes. Make sure that you got your face covered um, for projects like this for sure, but just keep that in mind as you're working. Um, that was kind of stupid on my part, but you know what? Sometimes we just uh, don't have our brains turned on.
Okay, so I've got the whole thing put together. I got my my edges finished up on here, and now it's time to sand this thing down. Um, I don't think I need to do any planing at all. We'll see. I think uh, I can actually sand these. Are it's pretty even and level throughout. It's flooring that I recovered from my house, as I've been saying, um, and so there's not a whole lot of you know, bad or unlevel areas. There's a couple little tiny spots I think with a little bit of sanding will be fine. So I think I'm gonna try and avoid the planing and run right into sanding this thing down. Now, a couple things to think about and things I'm gonna be doing with this. One, I am, like I said, gonna have a bull nose on this edge all the way around of some sort. Uh, I'm not gonna do that yet until I'm finished sanding. That gives me the ability to sand every edge down without causing any rift or any um, over sanding on any sort of routed edge that I would put on here. I can come back after I'm done sanding to put those edges on and then go ahead and do a quick hand sand and start the staining process. And I'm kind of waffling with some different ideas. I've gotten some ideas from you guys, thanks for that. Um, a couple of my friends have even reached out and said, hey, I got an idea for something and it's stuff I've never done before. So um, I may, I'm gonna take a look at that and, um, and see where we go with that. Shout out to Scott McNichol. Um, that is a great idea and if I get into that I'll explain how I do it on this video so um, next step is gonna be going and starting to strip this thing down again I don't think I'm gonna use stripper yet we're gonna see how this goes um, it's a 26 year old stain and finish and it's, they've never been redone so we're gonna see I'm gonna start with 80 grit uh, if everything comes up according to plan then we can move on to a 150 to 220 to maybe even a 320 finish we'll just kind of see how that's going to look as we play it out so um, experiment process part uh, whatever this is four three and uh, we're off and running so we're going to start sanding this thing down and just see where we end up all right Um, it's a little more finicky with the red oak. 
I've never actually used this color before, especially with this kind of combination of material. So at first I was kind of waffling with it, but um, I think I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out and I'm gonna run with it. So that's what it is. You know, I'm not gonna strip it down and start over, which I was kind of debating with it after coat two. I did three coats and then I had some stuff that was kind of flashing red that I didn't really like. It was looking like it was smearing a little bit, even though it wasn't. It was just the way that the wood was taking its color. So I went ahead and just, I would say touched it up. I didn't actually wipe off the stain in certain areas. I kind of let it kind of soak. And it looks, it looks at least in my opinion, a little bit better. So um, I'm happy with the finish. And now we're gonna get into applying the coats of polyurethane and then it's gonna be transported back to my house. So um, that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna go ahead with a semi-gloss clear polyurethane, the Verithane product, and I'm gonna wipe that on and then wipe it off. So let's get started. shop it's been coated in three layers of polyurethane um, again semi semi gloss clear coats and it actually the color now that it's in here uh, it turned out a lot better than I thought I was really on the fence for a little while so what I'm doing now is I'm actually wrapping this island in new quarter inch plywood and then I'm gonna install the top and then I'm gonna go back and start trimming everything out with kind of a modern looking wainscoting style um, and all this is gonna get the same blue that the rest of the kitchen cabinets have. And I think this turns out really well with the new floors as well. So uh, I'm gonna set this top, I'm working by myself today, um, get it installed on the cab for the island, and then um, I'm gonna come back and start trimming everything out for the island wrap. And uh, after that, it's paint and we're all done. So this is, uh, this is how you do it, at least my version of how you do a reclaimed countertop. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to get to this. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, please. Hit the like button. Leave your comments below. I'm pumping out more videos. We're getting closer on the end of this project and getting ready to stick that sign in the yard to sell the house. So I'm um, going to get this installed and I'm going to get some lunch. <laughs>